I welcome everyone for the day six session. Today we are going to discuss about the climate data analysis tool. This tool I'm using uh, since 2010, like more than 10 years I'm using this tool. Let me go, let me go to the uh, website. This is their website. Okay. Climate data analysis tool. Now they are in the community data analysis tools. Previously, they used to keep it, keep it as a uh, climate data analysis tool. And this is uh, this library is developed by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, USA. It also sponsored by NASA. One of the NASA project is this uh, CDA project. And using this, what are all things uh, we can do? First, let me go to the gallery session. So that will give uh, give us an idea what is the use of this uh, tool, which we are going to learn for the next five days. So you, while, by looking at this website, the gallery, you can see that this is a 3D cube. You can rotate it. We can create a three a three dimensional globe and then get uh, circulation. So this kind of images or animation can be created. And this is a 3D uh, multi plot, which is a cross sectional. You can do the cross sectional. Like this is uh, the bottom. You can see that world map, and this is a uh, pressure level at uh, at. Part particular cross section you can cut it and see how this three dimensional plot can be done this is camera angle that you can rotate it and similarly you can see the multi, multi three dimensional plots gallery you can see it here like even three dimensional wind vector can be plotted and beyond that uh, uh, as you normal two-dimensional our uh, mercantile projector uh, latitude longitude just a normal uh, for publication what how we used to plot it similar way we can plot it at different color scale and streamlines as well as wind wind figures everything can be plotted You can see that ISO lines, ISO fields. This, this is Elena, Elena stuff based on UAF mode. Or, or uh, instead of map, and this is just a regular uh, two dimensional without, ba without base map, you can plot it. Or line, line plot, multiple line plots either. And box plot is there. Box plot is like each and every grid will be plotted independently instead of uh, smooth or isofill, isofill or iso lines. This is the box plot example. And this is a pattern based. If you want to plot with some box fill pattern for some significance over this particular region, for that, we can use this kind of template. Like a, this is the pattern. There are multiple patterns available so far. Like more than twelve. Like I think more than forty-eight uh, patterns are available that we can use it. This also again sim, uh, simple fill color, or you can customize your own RGBA color. So this can be done. This is just a one of the part. Always visualization is the end. end. Uh, that's the end product but before that we have to do we have to cro cross ac across uh, many steps first thing we have to read it we should be able to read the our uh, netcdf file say for uh, what are the uh, data format available in weather and climate community we should be able to read it 
and we should be able to write it in the same format so using this cdet library we can read the uh, self describing files such as uh, netcdf files and grip1 grip2 hdf hdf4 hdf5 files also you can read uh, ascii files that we have seen yesterday itself but using this we can write only netcdf file format we can read from multiple file format but we will be able to write only in hdf format i mentioned that installation but as of now it is not possible because i have some internet connect disconnectivity to my hpc my office hpc uh, having some internet issue so uh, today i am not go, uh, going to show demo installed moreover uh, nsmrwf uh, hpc already pre installed this library but still i want to give demo on how to install maybe in upcoming classes uh, like tomorrow or day after tomorrow i'll schedule this how to install if you go to our website sorry yes if you go to getting started and installation yes first of all we need to install anaconda or miniconda i would prefer to install miniconda rather than installing anaconda because anaconda having thousands of package which we may we will never use it miniconda would be sufficient to install this once we install miniconda then the installation is very easy just a single line we need to follow like this conda environment creates iphan n environment name and iphan f and this file this file any one of them from here we have to download like in linux windows or mac os python 2 or python 3 so one of them we have to download and then we have to run this command it will be installed that's it however i will show demo in upcoming classes so today i'll just discuss about getting started i'll give introduction to the arrays and variables before getting into deep into the climate data analysis tool in terms of uh, I am able to make maximize. Uh, so today I will just show the demo and explain about arrays and variables. Then tomorrow onwards we will be will be discussing more about uh, there are some modules available in climate data analysis tool specifically for a more more in terms of uh, statistical analysis or a regrade or interpolate uh, those many things are there that we will see tomorrow before that we have to understand two dimensional or three dimensional or multi dimensional array how we are going to handle based on this only this climate data analysis tool being uh, the wrapper has been written so first we have to understand this and tomorrow onwards we will go in deep into the see that yes then like we will be discussing about what is an array and the numpy package that like we can create an arrays and array index array queries manipulation and what is inside the see that like we have something called mv variable or mosq variables with the meta information and we do have uh, GUI for the CDAT 
but the latest version right now it is not available but it will be available very soon you can say that it is available or not the gui but i never used it and this presentation is made by my professor krishna achudara so i'm just adapting this pro this presentation i'll be going through this so in python we uh, we do have some package called uh, numpy previously it was a numerical numeric numeric it, it used to call it as a numeric and numeric python then on they change it into numpy so this is just like a array or like a list except that all elements are of the same type because they want to make the operation much faster we have studied and day before uh, classes we have seen that in python we can create a uh, mixed list like you can put a uh, integer float string so the, this kind of mixed list we can create in python but in numpy it is dedicated one array should contain only one data type either integer means only integer or if it is float means float only double means double just to make make sure that uh, the operation is much faster and multi dimensional arrays are more clearly supported also normal array uh, operation also we can be uh, can be done so it's a standard package available in python not only cdat and many other library like iris and x arrays these three are the uh, main thing to access climate data or uh, weather data act to access with the meta information uh, cdat and iris then x arrays these three uh, the next to four four uh, five days we'll be discussing about the say that an iris so how we are going to utilize this uh, numpy just we need to do import numpy this is the syntax just we need to import the numpy i'll show the demo in the right now so we can create arrays using numpy just import numpy they say some variable a is equal to numpy dot array this is the syntax numpy dot array then open parenthesis within that whatever array you want to create we can pass it as argument here it is done with the two dimensional so let me try Once we install Conda, then we can list out what are the we can create a multiple environment. So I'm going to choose what I installed. Once we activate it, you can see that previously it was base. Now it is C at 8.1. My entire Python environment has been changed. Is that visible in YouTube? Okay, fine. I'm going inside. I just imported this font is visible.
let me say that this works or not okay i'm able to copy from pdf so i just assign this why this imported numpy then i'm assigning to some variable initializing with some value that's called a a is called numpy dot array open parenthesis that's a function or method within that i made one array or list then list containing two elements that also list so first list containing these three values 2 3 minus 5 and second list containing 21 minus 2 1 so when i'm just accessing this a it becomes it shows a multi-dimensional array suppose uh, we can do a dot d type data type so it shows that integer 64 which means a double integer it consists of like in python or in any other language we do have something called integer 32 integer 64 so it's a, this is 64 long integer it can occupy suppose if you want to change this into float or double there is option called here while creating you can, while creating, you can pass the argument second argument b d for double so it's double means a float 64 if you keep uh, like uh, now it has that though we enter integers here, here while creating the list is integer but we, we made the argument data set double or float so now this data has been created with a data type you can see that it is a floating point point you can see that so we have some predefined type codes d for double precision floating and f for single precision floating that's the f32 and i for integer l for long integer suppose uh, if you want to create some initialize with zeros always in fortran we used to do that so let's do this i am just initializing zeros numpy dot zeros inside that we have to give the shape at what shape uh, we want to create the or initialize the initialize the arrays with the zeros of course if i'm if you want to create one more one more dimensional now you can see that it is having a dimensional so this is the topmost this array and it's ending with here it contains one that is into two elements this also to be two element this also to be two element let's uh, let's see if we have pressure level and latitude longitude suppose three pressure level and two latitude and two longitude so this would be the shape of our array or time dimension if you want to create a time dimension then we can create it let me go with four so you can see that four times four times this will be created three comma two comma two or three by 
2 by 2. So you can create uh, dummy arrays uh, like this, whatever the shape you want to create, you can create. Say, if you want to create some numbers, yesterday we have seen like a range or X range. So you can go with this X range or A, sorry, A range. it contains 0 to 9 suppose if you want to go with like 1 to 20 by 2 this also will work if you want to go with a uh, point floating point now it's being generated with the floating numbers in default python it is not possible it will just create as integer only but in numpy you can create with a floating point operation also this is the step step between each and uh, every numbers so I kept 0 0.01 so it, it has created these many numbers 90 numbers you can create whatever step interval you want to create you can create 9000 numbers it's just generated So as usual, once uh, you created NumPy or once you access this NumPy, you can access it using A of 0 or A of 1 like we have seen yesterday. It's the same as uh, list concept. Like we have seen even the minus 1 that will access the last number. So again, let me go to this example. We can access a of 0, a of 1, a of minus 1, a of 0 is this and 1 is this and minus 1 is just coming from the backward. Suppose the question is what is asked if a of 1 to 4. So what will be the answer? So we already seen that uh, always Python are stored with the zero. So NumPy also having the same procedure. So this is zero and this is one. So it's starting with this one. So 3.2 will be printed. And this is two, index two, zero, index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four. So this will be printed up to one two three only because in python we have seen it is always n minus one so let me do this as i mentioned just let's go start from 3.2 5.5 and minus 6.4 so one colon four this is just one dimensional so suppose if we have multi-dimensional the, the, then also we can do it let me copy this one so this is my array a is like what is the shape we can get the shape just the a dot shape shape is 3 by 6 3 rows and 6 columns column 1 2 3 4 5 6 so three rows, the first row, second row, third row. So now what is the a, a of one comma two? So there is uh, one more option called comma also we can use it.
so over this it returns this value this 4 one the first one is the first row wise and then comma gives the second option which column you want to access let me explain more clear now a of 0 returns this array the first row and a of 1 returns the second array so within that second array I, again I want to access some second index so if suppose I'm accessing of 0 it returns 1 this one comes from here now 22 now yes so if I want to access the 4 then we should mention what is the row and what is the column it starts from always 0 and ends with n minus 1 if n is the maximum of your row length or column This is now he is asking like a A. So here I am just accessing the first uh, first index row. This I am going to access comma colon. So colon means it just empty colon means it just bringing everything. Okay suppose if I want access only uh, up to three elements now it's just uh, 0 1 2 so colon if you want to more clearly explain this is the implicit 0 is implicit if if you are not giving the starting index 0 to 3 so first column I am accessing, sorry, the first index column, index row, first, first index row we are accessing, that's the first argument, then second argument we are within that, from where to where it has to bring the content or elements. First I am changing to 1, 2, 3, then it will be just 22 and 4. Suppose if I am not giving the uh, second argument like 3 I am just removing the ring it's just bringing everything starting from 22 here starting from 22 and just bringing whatever it contains up to the length of length of the array And let us go with these of this example so what it is bringing it is bringing this this 1 and 22 uh, also 3 by 3 and 1 how we are accessing yeah 1 to 4 because this is 0, 1, 2 and we don't have fourth column yeah fourth row but still it didn't throw any error because uh, that's how the number is designed if you are giving extra number or extra length it will not return any error it will just re return whatever it is possible if it is not possible then only it will throw error so 1 to 4 arrays and then uh, the column is 0 to 2 so this is 0th column 2 1 3 and this is the first column 3.2 1 so this within that we are going back we are accessing this 1 22 and 3 1 So we have to understand clearly about array accessing or array indexing then only the future uh, classes will be easy to understand
So what's the use of this accessing index? Suppose uh, if we have any uh, like a uh, version data at uh, say for SST and that SST we should not uh, give value over the land. So we have to mask over the land. So we should know the correct exact lat long or we should though our library using lat long coordinate but internally it, it, it has to get the index using index only we can keep some values like true or false or zeros or ones so accessing this kind of index is essential we should understand very clearly you have to practice yourself then only you can understand once you understand then it will never you'll never forget the concept of array accessing then numpy have some more features say numpy dot shape you can get a shape of the eye we have seen it already let me show you one more time this is three by six suppose if i'm accessing this this will return two by two because this is two by two original array is three by six while accessing we are indexing through some of the index like one two four and zero two two and its shape is two by two Suppose if I'm overwriting this a with a is equal to a a of this, then it will be overwritten. Now, because we are delete, deleting that omitting omitting that variable a, and then again reassigning assigning the two by two value or array into that again a. So the previous this array has been removed. This array has been removed from the memory and the new array has been assigned to the a you can get rank rank of the array also you can get the size numpy size Numpy size is just a uh, number of elements, four. Either you can use numpy dot size, and then we can use the first the array that also returns, or a dot size. Similarly, a dot rank. Sorry, uh, Attribute function instead of rank matrix. Okay, I should use this one matrix rank. The rank is being deprecated. Instead of that, they have moved that rank into the linear algebra. That's another module inside Python. Within that, they are calling it as a matrix rank. Once you get it, then you can pass this into the our interesting variable that is written in the rank yeah now we'll go into the numpy dot reshape this is the most essential thing which we learn we'll just go back to my Just copy paste. So we know that uh, the shape is three by six, three by six and two by eight.
we sh we can change this into different shape right now this is uh, 3 by 6 so 3 by 6 is uh, 18 so we can change into different shape let's say 2 by 9 so 2 by 9 also 18 I mean 2 into 9 is 18 and 3 by 6 is 18 now you can see that so I just reshaped it this EA with uh, different shape but make sure that uh, multiplication of this array element or shape should not change otherwise it will throw error so what happens this 6 7 8 9 here to 2.4 then from 1 20 to 4 has been moved here as the first row and then from here 0.15.3 minus 9 kept here in the second row first three numbers then the remaining numbers of the kept followed in the second row so similarly you can do the reshape or any shape but make sure we are uh, the multiplication is or the shape is consistent suppose if i'm changing to 6 by 3 now you can see that so 2 3 by 3.2 5.5 then this has this become the second row this is third and this is fourth this is fifth and this is sixth you can see it here very clearly so you can do it let's say b is equal to a dot reshape like this also we you can do it and within that i'm passing six by three now the a value will be reshaped and uh, stored into b but a shape will not change you can pass uh, one also because uh, that is not going to change your multiplication anyway so the one is the first uh, dimensional or you can call it as our pressure pressure level or or time dimension whatever way you want to call you can consider this So if you are if you are introducing this one in between, then you can see it very clearly. This is the uh, topmost element that is having six sixth length size within that first level that is here. First level is starting here and ending it here. Then it contains three three elements or three columns yes. so he, you have to work on yourself to understand this numpy concept but once you understand this numpy concept then you can utilize many, many functions in python scipy also based on this numpy only so you have to understand this very clearly we can do transpose also let's do this right now a a is 3 3 by 6 now i'm just transpose like a matrix transpose we can do it so now the columns becomes rows rows become columns that's a transpose this i can store into b you can see that 6 by 3 instead of b by 6 it has become 6 by 3 And you can use this function to uh, flatten. Flatten means like uh, the multi-dimensionality will be removed and everything will be treated as a single dimensional or single array. It is previously uh, B shape was six by three. Now I'm just storing it to C, C dot shape. It's just 18. You have seen that C, 
just uh, it just removing the multi diamond multi dimensionality and then just keep it, keeping it as a single dimensional or single array you can also do repeat this is a and i'm just repeating the a three times so what happens this individual numbers being repeated you can see that first number 2 2 being repeated three times and 3.2 repeated 3.2 i mean three times 5.5 repeated for three times you can also specify the axis at what dimensionally you want to repeat it let me give zero. so the first uh, zero means zero taxes zero taxes being repeated which means this this is the zero dimensional so this is repeated instead of previously it was repeated uh, like it every element repeated and next to next instead of that I'm, i kept the the first axis wise this entire axis of this entire row repeated three times so i give one so by default it took one that we have seen already because it is having basics suppose if i want to repeat that entire shape as it is this entire content i want to repeat with the same procedure so what we have to do first we have to re reshape it i'm just adding uh, one more index or one more index access then I can do the repeat. See it now. Now the entire row or entire matrix has been repeated three times. This is one time and this is second time. This is third time. So previously we have seen example for just repeating the numbers as it is because that time shape was just 3 by 6 so when I give 0 the first uh, first row uh, like a row wise it is repeated and kept next to next if you want to repeat the entire uh, two dimensional array then we have to make it as a three dimensional by giving uh, the first and first dimension as a number one say for again I'm just repeating a dot shape 1 comma 3 comma 6 previously it was just 3 comma 6 or 3 by 6 so now i just mentioned 0 axis 0 means this is the 0th 0th axis so with that with that axis we are repeating three times So we can do convert also. You can do type, type conversion also. You can do. Next, I will. Yeah. So, like there is an example to multiply two matrix or two arrays, and element by element we can multiply. That's the example as here it is given the question is like multiply two arrays together element by element not uh, dot product just element by element we want to multiply how in general how we supposed to do just we are importing numpy then we are getting the shape to get the what is the shape or get the number of rows or number of columns that we are getting it here storing it to shape shape underscore a then in general what we used to do first we have to like initialize the output variable with the zeros 
the same shape we are keeping it initializing with zeros then suppose if you have two arrays a comma b what in general what we used to do like for i in x range or range shape of the first index then for j x x range suppose if both are having same shape then the column wise we are going inside the for loop then product like this is how we used to write in fortran or a, any other any other for, formal language every index we are accessing a comma j star b comma j that is the resultant multiplication product will be stored at product of i comma j let me do this So this shape is having let me just make so I just assigned A. What is the A? A is this and B is this. And A shape is shape only two by four, both are two by four, and product is we just initialize with the zeros. So we can do this for loop, inner for loop. Intendation is required. Now it is done, it is done with the multiplication. Now the result is this is the product of A comma B. It's just an element by element multiplication. If we don't know the inbuilt functions of numpy or the power of numpy in general, we can write it right like this. But this is ineff inefficient code. So without loop, we can do this. Just a simple multiplication will do that. This is A, this is B. Now product is A, A star B. It just multiplied. So NumPy has a facility that will take care. We no need to do this kind of looping stuff. So that's a power of Python and NumPy. Suppose if, if you want to do dot product, then we can use NumPy dot dot A comma B. So it, it, it is throwing error because it is not proper shape 2 by 4 and 2 by 4. Like it is throwing error like in uh, dimension 1 not equal to dimension 0. Suppose uh, what I am doing, uh, I am doing the dot product where a dot shape is 2 by 4. Then I'm just doing B dot P that is transpose. P is a transpose. So now this shape is four by two. So it was throwing error just because both are having same dimension. So this is a dot product. You know, we know that the matrix dot product, how it used to calculate. So we just did, did the dot product. So it becomes 2 by 2.
So similarly, you can do the add operation. This is A, this is B. You can do A plus B. You can do A minus B. You can do even A divide division. Individual element will be subtracted, divided. This everything is done with element by element wise. And this is a faster than loops because number it is written in C. The basically the core the core uh, program is written in C and it is they have given facility to call in Python. So it's much faster. And it will ca call the appropriate function. If it is a larger array, it will call different algorithms. If it is smaller array, it will call the different algorithm to the computation. So by this way, NumPy is much faster. OK, five more minutes. I will, I'm going to show one more example. OK, now the question is like, Say you have two dimensional array A and you want to return an array to the answer which is double the value when the element is element in the A is greater than 5 and less than 10 and output should be 0 when it is not. I hope you understand the question. Suppose you have two dimensional array called A and you want to store some of, some of the modified output into the answer answer array. The condition is if a is greater than 5 and less than 10, then double the value. And if it is not, just keep it as 0. This is the question. So how we can do if you are just writing with a for loop? We are just initializing the numpy. Like answer, just numpy dot zeros. We are initializing the same shape as a. And then we are loop throughing the first uh, row wise. So we are getting for a high index range and then just this is the length of the length of the array that's a first row, row row count and then for j column count then if a of j a particular a of j element is greater than 5 and same element less than 10 then we are assigning to the answer a of j just uh, a comma b sorry a star b we are multiplying otherwise pass there is a something uh, keyword called pass in python it will do nothing so suppose uh, if you want to declare some block statement but without uh, assigning any statement you can use the pass pass is the keyword or command it, it will not do anything it will not it's just do nothing so i just repeat this i'm going to do this So now it is return answer. It is a multiplication of a and b. Sorry, whenever 
uh, greater than 5 and less than 10 only that is being multiplied with the b so the, here 5.5 .5 is greater than 5 so this is the only element contains greater than 5 so only the, this element being multiplied so instead of doing like that in numpy we can do many logical operation in a single command suppose a you have some a is a two dimensional array you can do operational just greater than symbol so this will just contain true or false it just return contain true or false see this a greater than 5 it just returns the true only to this element rest everything is false and here one more true so only these two are greater than 5 rest everything is false or if you use this kind of uh, function also numpy dot greater this also returns in similar results we can do logical operation logical and logical or it's a predefined function available in numpy so what here we are doing here we are we can write the same question we are writing the condition numpy dot logical and where a greater than 5 and a less than 10 the question is just double the double the a so what we are doing is just doubling the a so there is a function called number dot where the first argument is condition this is a condition where this is the logical and a greater than a and a less than 10 the two two dimensional array true or false being multiplied and the return uh, answer is stored at condition that condition we are pausing so wherever the true condition is there what, what what do you want to replace so we are replacing with the a star 2 and rest rest of the place we can keep with the with the zero so previously it was 5.5 .5. now it just double it suppose if you want to keep uh, minus 1 instead of 0 everywhere you can keep minus 1 everywhere will be minus 1 only the current answer is being multiplied so this kind of uh, it will be have frequently using in our uh, data science suppose masking masking the lancy or if you want to mask elino elino or lonina cases where it it used to have 1.2 degree celsius greater than the consecutive anomaly days so that region we have to get it like this and then you can do the mask or uh, replace with some different values so this kind of logical operation is we have to understand very better so you have to do exercise on this then you will understand the, um, the much easy functionality if you are if you are doing like this instead of uh, utilizing the where function or condition it will be very tough to do when you are accessing multidimensional. Here I just showed the two dimensional array. For two dimensional array, it's to do the loop like really large array like our entire uh, weather data or climate data, entire global global data we have to utilize all time and time di time dimensional. So it will be very tedious if you are just loop through. It. So once you understand all the functions in NumPy, surely you can utilize it. And the next array, you can do, yes, here what they're doing. Yeah, instead of one and instead of true and false, 
they are assigning to uh, true and false instead of zeros and ones logical and a greater than 5 less than 10 this is a condition in a single line he is writing so this is much much faster numpy is much much faster rather than if you are loop. so try to avoid loop so we should never ever write loop until it is necessary all the numpy operations all the multidimensional operation you can do it in a single line or at the most two lines using numpy inbuilt commands or methods without using any any loop so just remember you don't you never utilize the loop try to utilize the existing functions or existing methods in terms of accessing this multi-dimensional array or any manipulation so arrays in numpy we have very basic functions like you can do sign exponential interrupt cost function tan function you can call all the mathematic function in numpy multi-dimensional also we have basic statistical methods correlation histogram you can find the histogram using numpy and Hamming filter and fft this everything is available if you want to access more help on just do help help of numpy or help of any particular function you will get it here was help of numpy it will just return the very detailed documentation it is having more and more functions methods in terms of suppose if i want to understand what is histogram or how to use it we can do numpy.histogram within the help command it just returned the help function we can pass a and then bins what bins range you, we want or range either do you want to normalize this data before computing histogram or if you want to pass weights here they have mentioned the detailed arguments so you can go through this if you have any function any doubt or uh, any inbuilt methods you always use the help in python shell itself you don't need to search in internet So it's already five. Tomorrow I'll just show a demo on reading multidimensional text. Suppose if we have ASCII file with the numbers that we can read it in NumPy in a just a single line. Suppose if, uh, if you are write, reading it in program, then we'll be reading like this. Just yesterday I showed you like you can read it text file or CSV file. We can read it with a for loop. But I already mentioned we should try to avoid the for loop. So in NumPy, there's just a single line command that will read your entire CSV at any particular latitude, sorry, any particular rows or columns or within that you can, while loading itself, with you can subset the ASCII multi-dimensional or multi-column text numbers. So it's already five today. I'll, I'm just finishing this. Tomorrow I'll just show this exercise. Then we'll jump into the climate data analysis tool. Uh, like I'll be showing demo on reading, possible installation. Then subsequently I'll read the NetCDF file, how to read it. Then I'll show how to access the variables. Then in detail, I'll be showing how to while well, loading, how to subset the uh, time dimensional or level or latitude longitude. Then fin the final day, I'll showing how to do plotting using CDAT. Then finally, the last pre last day, we'll discuss about iris. Then last day, we will discuss about what are all the uh, Python tools we are using in ncmrwf for what are the products being generated using python i'll be showing this uh, i'll come to question session just in two minutes if somebody has written a question then just reloading and
Okay, somebody has to please give. Yes, this uh, this was wrong thing in the slide because that slide contains already previously a. So that was the thing. This slide contains the uh, subsequent of from the beginning of the slide. Madam has asked uh, doubt in this. Like a shape a. But this these two lines should be below this a comma b. After this a, this this line should come. So I'll give some questions. Maybe I'll send through email. You can practice that. And I guess nobody has questions in either pair. Yeah, I think somebody has some question. Just one minute, just loading. Yeah, somebody has like. As you have heard, there are a lot of data structured software programming languages are available. Some of us may feel comfortable in certain language. My question is how a beginner or Python would know which library or preferred function to import before doing certain operation on arrays. For example, NumPy does a lot of mathematical calculations. So answer to the question is so before jumping into so here i'm here my uh, role is just i'm showcasing you that these are all po possible functionality so using this once you get interest into that you have to learn by your own just to get 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 uh, go to like numpy.org or numpy website you just only one time you have to read the documentation and, and do the exercise once you come to know all, what are all the methods or functions available in Py, NumPy, you don't need to remember that. That's uh, my logic. You don't need to remember all the functions available in the Python or in NumPy. You have to just exercise only one time. Then whenever you need it, surely you'll come to know that or you will think of it, this some function is available already in Python. So again, you will go back and read the documentation. Then you will implement it. So my suggestion is just read only once and do the exercise, all the Python basics and in in our case NumPy, just do the all the basic operations in NumPy, only one time then you will remember whenever you need it. Then again that time you will search the internet then you will get the correct syntax. By this way you can learn much more. This is how I am following. And next one is a float object cannot be interpreted as a as an integer. Uh, this I will answer later because I need some more examples. Please give your program code here, then I will reply it here. So uh, today is five fifteen. So sorry for delay. I'm closing this today session. So tomorrow onwards, we will discuss more about the climate data analysis tool. I thank everyone. Please ask question here if somebody having more doubts.